The sub $200 GP market has become real exciting over the last couple of months. So here I have my top three options, depending on if you wanna buy new or used. Today we'll be fully reviewing, benchmarking, and checking out the market data for these less than $200 graphics cards. We're also gonna be talking about this beastly new testing rig inside the Antec Performance One. And if you're about to start building a gaming PC that you want to have the best value possible, this is the video to watch first. And speaking of getting the best value possible, big thanks to OnePlus and Amazon for sponsoring this video. And this this new OnePlus 11 5G is such a great phone option for this channel. If you're into price to performance gaming PCs, then you're probably into price to performance phones, or at least you should be. While other phone manufacturers are adopting the RTX 4090 pricing models, OnePlus continues to deliver super high-end hardware and features while remaining at a very affordable price. I know, us PC builders can't relate to that philosophy at all right now. This new 11 5G model sports crazy quick fast charging as it takes just 27 minutes to fully charged up. The new 50 megapixel triple camera system produces the cleanest photos possible, even if you're a photography noob and you're just trying to get as many shots of your crazy kids or pets. And my favorite part is that they're actually innovating unlike most phone companies these days, and I'm in love with this new alert slider. This has three different options depending on which life scenario you're in, where you may want full audio, vibrated notifications, or completely silent, and it's mind-boggling that other phones don't have a three-way slider like this. If you're trying to save some money on your next phone because you don't need like a $1,500 plus product and you'd rather save that money for another gaming PC or gaming PC upgrade, then feel free to check out the OnePlus 11 5G, which is linked down at the top of the description. All right, so let's do a quick overview of these three cards and then we'll get into some data. Remember that for a video like this, the specific manufacturer and model isn't important and it's mostly about the specific NVIDIA or AMD GPU that we're talking about. For example, the first card that we have here is the MSI Mech RX 5700 XT, but everything that I'm about to say today is relevant to pretty much any 5700 XT, you don't have to buy this exact model. And speaking of that 5700 XT, you may have noticed already that I actually only have two graphics cards here on the table today. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And that's because the 5700 XT that we tested with is already packaged up inside a build that's ready to be shipped out for our May 1st restock. I kind of messed up the timing on this one. <gasps> By the time you're seeing this video, the May 1st restock is already gone and over. But remember that we sell all of our PC builds over on zttbuilds.com. And if you can't wait for the next June 1st restock, we do always have our restock builds available and we're actually adding a fourth one to the mix here soon as well. Anyways, other than the RX 5700 XT, the other cards that we have here are the RTX 2060 Super and then the RX 6500 XT. And hold up a bit. Hold up. Wait a minute. You may have already seen where this is going, but one of these cards is definitely the odd one out. We're about to see in the benchmarking section here soon, but the RX 6500 XT doesn't deserve to be in the same category as these two other cards in terms of performance, but it is in the conversation when it comes to price. The really upsetting thing about the GPU market over the last year or so is that there continues to be no amazing budget price or performance options available for new cards under $200 anymore. That's where the 6500 XT comes into play. Now we are starting to see the RX 6600 hit the $200 mark for brand new pricing, and I would highly recommend that one instead. But as of right now, the RX 6500 XT is the best brand new GPU under $200 that you can easily find. It's actually closer to 150 bucks. And while we're talking about price, let's talk about these other two cards as well. First up for the RX 5700 XT, the price of this one is dropping so fast that I feel like the average sale price drops every single week. At the time of recording this video, the average completed sold auction over on eBay for RX 5700 XTs have been $161. And I'm gonna explain soon why this is absolutely unreal price to performance. For our other card, the RTX 2060 Super, here we are a bit higher with an average of $198, which just sneaks us in under $200 for a video like this. Keep in mind that a lot of 2060 Supers are still selling for over $200. I would not recommend the card at those higher prices. Nope. So real quickly, just to recap that, here's the prices side by side. I'm not going to include the used price of the 6500 XT because those aren't too popular yet, and I'm not including the new price of the other cards because they aren't produced anymore. All the prices you're seeing now are the realistic prices that you'll see almost every day of the week. And for another quick comparison, here's what the VRAM situation is looking like. And this has certainly become a hot topic when it comes to GPU comparisons, especially across AMD versus Nvidia cards. The RX 5700 XT comes included with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6. The 2060 Super comes with the exact same thing. And the 6500 XT only comes with 4 gigabytes of GDDR6. Next up, I want to talk about power draw real quickly, because that's definitely an important factor to consider whenever you're comparing super budget and power efficient graphics cards versus more power hungry cards from a few years. 
years ago. The RX 5700 XT launched back in 2019, and at the time, the power draw wasn't terrible, but this draws around 220 to 230 watts on average when gaming, and I'd recommend no less than a 550 watt power supply to be on the safe side of things. For the RTX 2060 Super, that launched at pretty much the exact same time, but Nvidia was a bit further in terms of better power consumption at that point. On average, the 2060 Super only draws around 180 watts while gaming, and that's the difference between possibly getting away with a high quality 450 or 500 watt power supply, which I wouldn't recommend doing with the 5700 XT. And then finally, the 6500 XT is drastically different than the other two. That's the running theme throughout this entire video, by the way. And this one launched just last year in 2022, and the power draw is only a bit over 100 watts when gaming, meaning you can pretty much use any safe and reliable power supply on the entire market. And real quickly, it's always worth highlighting what you may see as a day-to-day -day difference, depending on if you go with an Nvidia card or an AMD card. Did that backwards, but it's okay. For starters, like 90% of casual PC gamers are still preferring Nvidia cards these days, so that may throw out the 5700 XT and 6500 XT options right out the window. <laughs> Nvidia has proven that they have the more quote stable drivers of the last few years, although I've personally had equal amounts of issues for both, and Nvidia just objectively dominates the mind share for a lot of casual gamers and builders right now. I personally think that Nvidia does offer more fun and innovative features with their platform, especially for streamers that want to take advantage of Nvidia broadcast, the encoder, and things like that, but honestly at the end of the day there's not much that you physically can't do with an AMD card compared to an Nvidia one, so I'd personally recommend going with whichever one has the best value, and the benchmarks are about the point that out here. We have a big chart coming here soon, but we'll first start off with some of these before moving on to that. Starting with the games that most people were actually playing, here in Fortnite with 1080p and Pro settings, we can see that the 5700 XT is getting 342 FPS, followed by the 2060 Super's 317 FPS, and then only 213 FPS from the brand new 6500 XT. Next up we have Apex Legends, and here we put the settings at 1080p and very high, and here we follow a similar path of performance going from the 5700 XT to the 2060 Super, and then down to the 6500 XT. Same thing with Hogwarts Legacy, it's great to see that all three of these cards can actually play this demanding of a title with 1080p and high settings, but the 5700 XT and 2060 Super are miles ahead of what the 6500 XT is capable of. And for a canned synthetic benchmark, we have 3D Mark's Time Spy, and this of course is also testing out the rest of the build as well. We'll talk about that here soon. But as you can see, we got a very solid above 10,000 score with the 5700 XT, slightly under that with the 2060 Super, and then about half of the performance with the 6500 XT. And real quickly, in case if you haven't noticed yet, that 5700 XT is performing right on par with newer cards like the RX 6600 XT and the 6650 XT, and that of course translates to even better performance than an RTX 3060. Did I mention that the average price is only $161 right now? Unreal value. And I'm sure you're also wondering by now what exactly this testing rig is looking like, and for the performance parts, we just made sure that we aren't bottlenecking these GPUs at all by including an Intel i5-13600K, an MSI Pro Z790 motherboard, 32 gigabytes of RAM clocked at 3600 megahertz, and we got some extra goodies that Antec and Team Group supplied us with as well. The case that all these parts are housed inside is the brand new Antec Performance 1, and this case launched early last month with a bang. This is not only rocking a super aesthetic and high performing design, but it's got a really unique temperature readout screen up here at the top, which is honestly perfect for a benchmarking PC like this. You can install Antec's iUnity software and get this all configured, and basically it allows you to very quickly monitor the temperatures of your CPU and GPU, which is a really neat feature. This case also supports all kinds of fan and radiator options. It comes included with three 140 40 millimeter PWM fans, as well as a rear 120 millimeter. And in the back, there's also a really cool cable management design, which I think more cases should take advantage of. The back side panel is also tempered glass, so you can't hide your absolutely awful cable management like we have here. But the cool part about it is if you do have some RGB SSDs to showcase in the back like this. Here's a couple of Team Group Delta Max RGB one terabyte SSDs, and shout out to them for the hookup on these. These new SSDs allow you to add some aesthetic bling to what would otherwise be a very boring product to look at. And SSDs like this work perfect for cases that either have a tempered glass rear panel like this, or if you want to mount them in the front of your build. And finally, the last hookup we got here is the power supply. This is the Antec Signature 1000 watt premium, and obviously this is complete overkill for the setup and GPUs we're testing today, but hey, we at least know that power won't be an issue for any of this testing. This is a 1000 watt fully modular 80 plus platinum rated unit that's tier A on the PSU tier list. Honestly, I don't even feel worthy enough to have this in one of my builds. It's a beast. But now that we know how the rest of the games will be tested, here's what the other benchmarks are looking like, and this is pretty much the exact same kind of result 
results across the entire board. On average, the RX 5700 XT is running anywhere from 10 to 30 FPS higher than the 2060 Super, and with the games we tested, the 2060 Super only beats the 5700 XT in a couple of titles. The 6500 XT, of course, is dragging behind big time, but with the PCIe Gen 4 setup, the RX 6500 XT is definitely no slouch when it comes to 1080p performance. It just doesn't compete with these much better options at their average used prices. It's an apples to orange comparison. So for a super quick recap, if you want the absolute best price to performance graphics card under $200, then the RX 5700 XT is objectively your number one choice. And it's actually my personal favorite choice to use for any budget builds right now. If you, for whatever weird reason, only want to use an Nvidia graphics card, then the 2060 Super is still very viable and relevant, but with slightly less price to performance. And finally, if you're only interested in a brand new graphics card, then the 6500 XT is virtually your only option right now, at least until the RX 6600 consistently stays around that price, which I do anticipate seeing here in the next few weeks or months. Missed it by that much. Let me know which model you think is the best option down below. And remember, if you ever want my help making these part selection decisions for you, head on over to zaxtechdrop.com slash consulting because I'd love to help you out with that. And also feel free to click the video that's on the screen now where I featured the RX 5700 XT in a gaming PC that we're about to sell on the May 1st restock.